Hey, thanks for stopping by. I don't know about you, but it seems like I stack all kinds of stuff on the top of my laser. And every time I'm looking for something, I can't find it. So today, we're going to build a simple finger joint box to take care of that problem. Stay tuned. So what I thought I'd do is I'd take you through the steps on how to make a, a simple finger joint box. Um, we'll use an online box generator. I'll show you the ins and outs of some of those. Once you get a couple of settings determined for your particular laser, you're going to be well on your way to making all kinds of really cool stuff when it comes to finger joint boxes. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that this video is going to be for, for beginners. Um, you might have just gotten your laser uh, fired up, uh, you've done a few things on it, you wanted to start creating some uh, product with it. Um, this video is going to be for you. If you're uh, well on your way to using your laser and you know you know how to create several things, this, is, it, this video is probably not going to be for you. It's going to uh, go pretty slow and fairly elementary. So this is the box generator that I typically use. Uh, there's a number of them on the market, and all of them are good. I use this one uh, just because it has a, a wide variety of different types of boxes that you can use. But before you start to cut out and build your boxes, there's a couple of things that we've got to do in order to make sure that the finger joints fit properly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Parts and Samples and open that up, and we're going to go to the Burn Test. And what this does is this generates a pattern of different uh, finger tab widths based on your particular laser, and you can determine which, which uh, part fits best, and then you'll use that setting when you um, are generating different boxes, and that way you know that your, um, your fingers are gonna uh, fit nicely together. So I'm gonna go to burn test, and we're going to change this to 75 millimeters. We don't need these squares to be too big. So you'll see what this is going to do here in just a minute. Um, it's going to go by uh, 01 in steps. There's going to be two parts, meaning that I'm going to have an A part and a B part, and I'm going to try to put those two parts together. And if they fit nicely, then we'll take the reading. You'll see what's going to happen there. We're going to use um, three millimeter thickness material. I'm going to go ahead and send this as a DXF. And the reason why I say that is if we saved it as an SVG, for whatever reason, this box maker uh, puts in text that Lightburn does not support. And so you can't, you can't import it like you want to. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and download it as a DXF. Um, we're going to leave everything as a default. We're not going to worry about a reference, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that to zero. And then this is the important part right here. Um, it's going to start your burn rate uh, in millimeters at 0.1. And what I found for most of the people that I've talked to, a lot of them are less than one. So I'm going to start it at about a 0.06. And you'll see what this generator is going to do. So I've got everything set up now, and I'm going to say Generate. Now it's downloading to my Downloads folder right now, and we'll open that up and take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and import that DXF that was created by our box generator, and we're going to come up to File, Import. We're going to go to my Downloads folder. Burn test right there. We're going to say open it, and it should import it. Okay. All right. So what you will find with most box generators that are online is it will all come in at, a, uh, at the same color. So everything is black. And so the first thing that we're going to have to do is make some modifications to these files um, so they cut out properly. And this is a great little exercise if you haven't used Lightburn much uh, to kind of get used to getting your way around uh, Lightburn. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font style on, on these particular readings, and I'm also going to assign them a different layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come in here 
and encircle that one. So that one's selected. I'll hold the shift key down. And I'm just going to select all this text because it has to be on a separate layer compared to the box itself. So now that all my text is selected, I'm going to select it as a blue layer. And I'm also going to change the font style because I don't the font style is hard to read for me. So I'm just going to come up here to Arial. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the font size so it's readable. There we go. Okay, and I'm also going to group that. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the box or the cutout for the box or for the test pattern. I'm going to turn it red. That's usually what I use as a layer for, for cutting things out. So easiest way to do it is just to select it all and then hold down the control key. Deselect the text. You'll notice that all of the um, pieces are still selected. I'm going to come over here and select red. And now I've got a red layer for cut and a blue layer for engrave. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and make sure that my engrave layer is first and my cut layer is second because you don't want these cut out first and then have it uh, come out. It looks like we've got two here that didn't, uh, that didn't convert. So easy enough, what we'll do is we'll select both of those. We'll turn those red, or excuse me, blue, and we'll change the font, and we'll get the font size down. Okay, so we verified our settings, and we've changed them if we've needed to. No error assist on the engrave. Again, these settings may be different for your laser. We're going to open up the uh, cut layer. We're going to make sure that our cut, we that have our air assist on, and that it's a line, not a uh, fill. Okay. Say okay. Then the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to preview the work. So we should have, the only thing that we should have selected down here is just optimize cut path for right now. And right here is your preview window. This is your friend. You definitely want to make sure you know where this is at because you're going to use it a lot. So we're going to preview it. And it looks like everything is showing, meaning that we've got the cut lines and we've got... The other thing, I'll show you a couple of things. So what you see is what you get. If you're not seeing on the preview window what you're intending to either engrave or cut out, don't go forward, go back and, and see what you haven't selected. The other thing is you can use this little scrubber bar down here to kind of see what's going on. So you'll notice that it starts with the engraving first. And then when the engraving's done, it should start going around and cutting out all your parts and pieces. That's exactly what we want. All right, now that we've verified that our settings are right and that our preview looks good, we're going to go ahead and uh, load up a piece of material in the laser and get these cut out. Okay, I've got the laser connected. It's ready to go. The other thing that I changed is I went from absolute coordinates to user origin. I changed my start point to this top left-hand corner. Again, this is a personal preference. And I'm also going to go ahead and set the user origin on the laser. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my left and right and up and down arrow keys on the control panel to go ahead and move the head over to the corner here. And I'm going to start right there. And so once I'm happy with where that needs to be, I'm going to go ahead and press uh, the origin button on the control panel on the laser and that will set uh, basically where that little green dot represents on uh, in Lightburn. Okay, we just pulled these off the laser and so let me show you how this works. You'll notice that there's a reading. This, this reading goes with these tabs and the reading goes up all the way around. So you got 0 .070, 0 .080, 0 .090 and so on and then this next series 
is the, is the next bigger. So it's 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. And so the idea with these calibration pieces is that you're going to start fitting them together and you'll find which uh, burn setting you'll need to put into your box generator in order to get real nice joints. So typically what I would recommend you do is, so I've got a, a 0.1 here and a 0.1 here, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this around and I'm going to see if these go together. And you can see that they don't go together without a whole lot of force. So that's way too tight. So then we would go to the, um, we would take this out of the equation and we would go with the 0 .090, 0 .090. And you can see that that's a little better, but still too tight. Then we would go with the 0 .080, 0 .080. Well, we're getting closer. They're starting to fit in there, but they're still too tight. You need a little room for glue. You want them snug, but um, let's try 0 .070. And so if we come up here, you can see that snaps right in together. It's, it's not loose but yet it goes together nice. So in, for my particular laser, my burn uh, rate is 0 .070, and that's what I'll want to put into the box generator. So when I generate a box, it'll create these joints that are perfect. And no matter which box you generate now, if you use this setting, it'll be just right for you. So you only have to typically do this once. This is not something that you have to do every time you uh, generate a box. It just gets you in the ballpark for uh, what your burn rate is on your particular laser. So now it's a matter of going back into the box generator and designing our box. Okay, so now that we got our burn correction uh, pieces done and we've determined that uh, for my particular laser it's 0 .07, we're gonna come in here to trays and down here to type tray. And then we're gonna, this is a little box that we're gonna build, okay? It's gonna be, each one of these sections is gonna be about an inch and a half by an inch and a half, and it's gonna be about two and a half inches tall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and uh, 50 millimeters, and th so this is millimeters per section times number of sections. So you can make these whatever you want. I'm gonna make my uh, little section square and there's gonna be nine sections total, three times three. I'm gonna make them two and a half inches tall, so about 67 millimeters. And if I wanted the inner, if I wanted this inner piece shorter than the outside wall, you would just key in a different, a different uh, distance. And so if we wanted to, we could make that, um, uh, maybe 65. Just a little bit. Now well, let's make it 63. Just for fun. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and indicate zero here. I don't want a hole in it for a grip. This is uh, designed for eighth inch material, so three millimeter. I can export it either as a DXF, SVG, or PDF, whatever you prefer. There's a reference down here that I'm gonna zero out because I don't want a, a reference bar. And this is probably the most critical part of this whole process. This is the burn correction in millimeters that we just figured out with those cards that we just kicked out of the laser. And in my particular case, my burn correction is 0 0.07. And so now I'm ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and generate it it's going to dump it to my downloads folder and we'll import it in Lightburn. Okay, now that I've got our box generated, I'm going to come over here and say import. And it's going to go to my downloads and I'm going to go to type tray. Open her up. One uh, uh, keystroke that I really enjoy that if you learn it, you'll save a lot of time, is if you need to rotate something instead of, of rotating it up here, if you just hit the period key on your uh, keyboard, it will rotate it for you, which is uh, very handy to know. So if you just use a period key, you can rotate it all around. Okay? Okay, now that we've got our... Uh, 
box parts rotated, you'll notice that they're in two different layers. They're in blue and in black. Uh, there's a reason for that. And it, uh, sometimes you'll get a box generator that'll just bring it in all in black. And the thing to keep in mind is you always want to cut the internal parts first. Uh, so all these little tabs you want to cut first before you cut the perimeter. And the reason being is if you cut this perimeter piece out and it drops down a little bit and then it tries to cut all these little tab openings, your box will never fit right. You'll struggle uh Excuse me, you'll struggle with getting it together, and that's what a lot of people have troubles with. It's not that they're doing something wrong. It's the sequence in which they cut this stuff out. So cut out your internal stuff out first. And so you, in this case, I'm going to have uh, my blue layer. It could be a red layer. It just depends on what you prefer to do. And this has to be a line. And in my case, it's going to be 25 millimeters per second at 60% power. Uh, same setting for the black, it's just that I want it to do all the blue parts first and then the black, okay? So both of these are set identically, it's just the way they, uh, the way they cut it out, okay? If we preview it, we can see that we've got all of our parts. It's going to take us about six minutes to cut out this box. If you wanted to verify that, you could go ahead and scroll this back and you see that it's going to do all the little internal tab cutouts first and then go to the perimeter cuts. It's just what we want. Now it's time to go ahead and load the laser and get this cut out. So now that we've got it taken off the laser, I just like to lay it out. I usually take these pieces, hit them with a little bit of sandpaper, knock off these edges on these tabs. It makes it go together a lot easier. And uh, we should be able to knock this together in just a, a minute or two and we'll have a nice box. Well, there you have it. Nice little box that you could use on just about anything. I dropped a big magnet in the bottom of it. I'm going to set it right here. Keep all my stuff where it needs to be. Hope you enjoyed the information. Until next time, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.